chop that one. I'm going to be reading a lot of the Bible today. It's like a Bible study session. Let me discuss chapter one. So please can sir. Can you help us? Yes, please raise your voice. And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Jesus, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring the offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. Verse 3. If his offering be a good sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Verse 4. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the bond offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. That's fine. And he shall kill the Wait, bullock. Wait, sorry. Read that verse for you. That's all. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the bond offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Okay, continue. That's fine. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's sons, shall bring the blood, and sprinkle the blood round about the altar, that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 6, and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. Verse 7, and the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Verse 8, and the priest, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. Verse 9, but his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet sour unto the Lord. Verse 10. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats, for a bone sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. Verse 11. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar, northward before the Lord. And the priest, Aaron's sons, shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. Verse 12. And he shall cut it into his pieces, with his head and his fat, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. Verse 13. For he shall wash the inwards and the legs with water, and the priest shall bring it all and burn it upon the altar. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet sour unto the Lord. Verse 14. And if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of young pigeons. Verse 15. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar, and wring off the head, and burn it on the altar. And the blood thereof shall be wrung out of the side of the altar. Verse 16. And he shall pluck away his crop with his feathers, and cast it beside the altar on the east part, by the place of the ashes. Verse 17. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof, but shall not divide it asunder. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood offering made by fire, of a sweet sago unto the Lord. Thank you. That's 17 verses, isn't it? Yes, All these things were for what? It says the burnt offering. Yeah. For what? Yes, for the, of for the atonement of sins. Okay. So we're going to be reading a lot of the Bible today. Now, please, go to chapter 4. Thanks, sir. Please help us.
and all the fathers were upon the new world. And the two kidneys, and the fathers were upon them, which is by the plants, and they call it before the new world, which with the kidneys, it shall be taken away. As it was taken out from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace of God. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the bottom. And the skin of the bullock and all his flesh, with his head and with his legs, and, with, and his inward, and his dog. Even the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp into a great place, where the ashes are poured out, and burn him on the wood of fire. Where the ashes, ashes are poured out shall he be burnt. And if the whole completion of which you have seen through his words, and the things be hid from the eyes of your sin, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord, concerning things which should not be done, and I guess, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bull of sin, and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bull of the and the bull shall be killed before the And the priest as anointed shall bring of the bull of the blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the of the blood, and sprinkle it seven times before the blood, even before the blood. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before God, that is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the blood of God, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for the sin of him. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven for him. And he shall carry forth the blood of the blood of the cow, and burn him as he burned the first blood. It is a sin of him for the congregation. When the ruler had sinned, and done some work through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord of the God, concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty. For if he sin, wherein he has sinned, come to his knowledge, he shall bring his offering, the king of the gifts, the maid without blood. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the God. And kill it in the place where they kill the body of the blood of the is a sinner. And the priest shall take up the blood of the sinner with his finger, and put it upon the hands of the altar of the blood of the and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of the And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar, and the fat of the sacrifice of peace of God. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning the sin, and he shall be forgiven. And if any of the common people sin through the grass, while he could have some of the case any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and be guilty. But if his sin, which he had sinned, comes to his knowledge, and he shall bring his offering, the king of the gates, the figure without blemish, for his sin which he had sinned. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sinner, and slay the sin offering in the place of the God of God. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof in his finger. Put it upon the horns of the altar of God, and shall pour out of the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, and the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace of God. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet sound unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. And if he bring a lamb for a sin of him, he shall bring it to the finger of that God. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin of him, and slay it for a sin of him. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin of the Lord, and put it upon the horns of the altar of God, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the Lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace of peace. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar, and come to the offerings made by fire out of the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for the sin that he had committed, and it shall be forgiven. Thank you. So all that we just read, all these many, many things we just read, for what? So that, the last verse, so that it shall be forgiven him. So the first one, they did all these plenty things, came out to about 17 verses for atonement. This one, they saw that this person that committed the sin ignorantly, that sin shall be forgiven him. This was about how many verses? 35 verses. Let's continue. Let's just move forward to chapter 11. So we'll not get too much.
I read from verse 1. Now the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Among the animals, whatsoever, whatever divides the hoof, having cloven hoofs and chewing the cord, that you may eat. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat among those that chew the cord, or those that have cloven hooves. The camel, because he chews the cord but does not have cloven hooves, is unclean to you. The rock helix, because he chews the cord but does not have cloven hooves, is unclean to you. The hare, because he chews the cord but does not have cloven hooves, is unclean to you. And the swine, though it divides the hoof, having cloven hooves, yes, does not chew the cord, is unclean to you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcass you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. These you may eat of all that are in the water. Whatever in the water has fins and scales, whatever in the seas or in the rivers, that you may eat. But all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. They shall be an abomination to you. You shall not eat their flesh, but you shall regard their carcasses as an abomination. Verse 12. Whatever in the water does not have fins or scales, that shall be an abomination to you. And this you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kites, and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kind. The ostrich, the short-eared owl, the seagull, and the hawk after its kind. The little owl, the fisher owl, and the screech owl, the white owl, the jackdaw, and the carrion vulture, the stork, the heron after its kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that creep on all fours shall be an abomination to you. Yet these you may eat of every flying insect that creep on all fours, those which have jointed legs above their feet, with which to leap on the earth. These you may eat, the locust after its kind, the destroying locust after its kind, the cricket after its kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. Verse 23. But all other flying insects which have four feet shall be an abomination to you. By this you shall become unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until evening. Whoever carries part of the carcass of any of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. The carcass of any animal which divides the foot but is not cloven hoofed or does not chew the cord is unclean to you. Everyone who touches it shall be unclean. Verse 27. And whatever goes on its paws, among all kinds of animals that go on all fours, those are unclean to you. Whoever touches any such carcass shall be unclean until evening. Whoever carries any such carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. It is unclean to you. This also shall be unclean to you among the creeping things that creep on the earth. The mole, the mouse, and the large lizard after its kind. The gecko, the monitor lizard, the sand reptile the sand lizard and the chameleon. These are unclean to you among all the all that people. Whoever touches them when they are dead shall be unclean until evening. Anything on which any of them falls when they are dead shall be unclean. Whether it is any item of wood or clothing or skin or sack, whatever item it is, in any which any work is done, it must be put in water and it shall be unclean until evening. Then it shall be clean. Any ethnic vessel into which any of them falls you shall break, and whatsoever is in it shall be unclean. In such a vessel, any edible food upon which water falls becomes unclean, and any drink that may be drunk from it becomes unclean. Verse 35. And everything on which a part of such carcass falls shall be unclean, whether it is in an oven or cooking stove, it shall be broken down for they are unclean and shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or cistern in which there is plenty of water shall be clean, but whatever touches any such carcass becomes unclean. And if a part of any such carcass falls on any planting seed which is to be sown, it remains clean. But if water is put on the seed, and if a part of any such carcass falls on it, it becomes unclean to you. And if any man which you may eat dies, he who touches its carcass shall be unclean until evening. He who eats of his carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. He also who carries his carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Let's stop there. First one, read about the offerings that you have to give. 
for atonement, the offering that you have to give for forgiveness of sin. Now I've just read, just brief, not the whole chapter, about what they can eat, what they cannot eat, what is unclean and what is clean. I like us to keep all these things in mind as we continue reading. Then we'll move to chapter 13. verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling, a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes on the skin of his body like a leper's sore, then it shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priest. The priest shall examine the sore on the skin of the body, and if the hair on the sore has turned white, and the sore appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leper's sore. Then the priest shall examine him and pronounce him unclean. But if the bright spot is white on the skin of his body and does not appear to be deeper than that skin, and its hair has not turned white, then the priest shall isolate the one who has the sore seven days. And the priest shall examine him on the seventh day. And indeed, if the sore appears to be as it was, and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall isolate him and rest seven days. Then the priest shall examine him again on the seventh day. And indeed, if the sore has faded and the sore has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab should at all spread over the skin after he has seen, after he has been seen by the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen by the priest again. And if the priest sees that the scab has indeed spread on the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. When the leper's soul is on the person, then he shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall examine him. And indeed, if the swelling on the skin is white, and it has turned the hair white, and there is a spot of raw flesh in the swelling, it is an old leprosy on the skin of his body. The priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall isolate him from, and shall isolate him, for he is unclean. And if the leprosy breaks out of out all over the skin, and the leprosy covers all the skin of one who has the soul, from his head to his foot, wherever the priest looks, then the priest shall consider, and indeed if the leprosy has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him unclean, who has the soul, it has all turned white, he is clean. Verse 14, but when raw flesh appears on him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean, it is leprosy. Or if the raw flesh changes and turns white again, he shall come to the priest. And the priest shall examine him. And indeed, if the sore has turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. Who has the sore? He is clean. If the body develops a boil in the skin and it is healed, and in the place of the boil there comes a white swelling or a bright spot, where this white, then it shall be shown to the priest. And if when the priest sees it indeed appears deeper than the skin, and its hairs have turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leper sore which has broken out of the boy. But if the priest examines it, and indeed there are no white hairs in it, and it is not deeper than the skin, but has faded, then the priest shall isolate him seven days. And if it should at all spread over the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leper sore. But if the bright spot stays in one place and has not spread, it is a scar of the boy, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if the body receives a bone on its skin by fire or by or if the body receives a bone on its skin by fire, and the raw flesh of the bone becomes a bright spot, reddish white or white, then the priest shall examine it, and indeed if the hair of the bright spot has turned white and appears deeper than the skin, it is it is leprosy broken out in the bone. Therefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous soul. But if the priest examines it, and indeed did, there are no white hairs in the white spot, and it is not deeper than the skin, but has faded, then the priest shall isolate him seven days, and the priest shall examine him on the seventh day. 
if it has at all spread over the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous sore. But if the bright spot stays in one place and has spread on the skin, but has faded, it is a swelling from the bone. The priest shall pronounce him unclean, for it is the scar from the bone. Verse 29. If a man or woman has a sore on the head or the beard, then the priest shall examine the sore. And indeed, if it appears deeper than the skin, and there is in it yellow hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a scaly, it is a scaly leprosy of the head or the beard. But if the priest examines the scaly sore, and indeed it, a, it does not appear deeper than the skin, and there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall isolate the one who has the skin seven days. And on the seventh day, the priest shall examine the sore. And indeed, if the scale has not spread, and there is no yellow hair in it, and the scale does not appear deeper than the skin, he shall shave himself, but the scale he shall not shave. And the priest shall isolate the one who has the scale another seven days. And on the seventh day, the priest shall examine the scale. And indeed, if the scale has not spread over the skin, and does not appear deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. Let's stop there. Again, talking about leprosy and uncleanness. Very graphic. But we're not ending there. We move to the last chapter we'll be reading today. Chapter 16 of Leviticus. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his 
fingers so look at it. Cleanse it. And consecrate it from the unseenness of the children of Israel. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of his and the altar, he shall bring the life to the Lord shall lay both his hands on the head of the life of confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions, concerning all their sins, to see them on the head of the Lord, and shall set it away into the wilderness by the hand of the children of Israel. The God shall bear on itself all their iniquities of the children of Israel, on the inhabitants of Israel, and it shall release the God in the wilderness. The Lord shall come into the tabernacle of Israel, shall take up the linen garment which he put on many events to the holy place, and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his body with water in the holy place, put on his garment, come out and offer his blood of sin and the blood of sin of people, and make atonement for himself and for people. The fat of the sin of sin he shall burn on the altar, and he, and he who will eat the blood and escape him shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may come to the farm. The bull for the sin of for the sin of sin and the blood of sin of sin, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be carried outside the town. And they shall burn in fire their skins, their flesh, and their form. Then he who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterwards he will come to the This shall be a statue forever for you, in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, which shall have fixed your shoes, and do not walk at all, whether a native of your own country or a soldier will dwell alone. But on that day, you shall make a comment for you, cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before God. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest for and shall have fixed. To the statue forever. And the priest, who is anointed and consecrated to, to minister as priest in his father's place, shall make atonement, and put on the unique place, and put it on it. And he shall make atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make atonement for the tabernacle of waiting and for the altar, and he shall make atonement for the priest and for all the people of the assembly. This shall be an everlasting statue for him to make atonement for the children of Israel, for all their sins, once in a year. And he did as the Lord of Hello. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? What kind of life is this? Are these people living? Even just thinking about everyday life, I would already be very scared. I don't want to mistakenly step where I'm not supposed to step. Or mistakenly do what I'm not supposed to do. He even talks about the one that sinned ignorantly. And that was how many chapters? Just to how many verses? Just to be forgiven. 35, describing the long process. Not be like, say, I did this purposely. Mistaking. And in 35 verses, describing in depth what you have to do. And let's not talk about the cost. How many goods do you want to buy in one lifetime? How many cows or bulls or turtle doves? Or do any of you know where you can find turtle doves? Where they are selling turtle doves? And they also looked about all the animals you cannot eat. You cannot eat pig, you cannot eat um, vultures, eagles, many insects, I can't remember a lot of them now. But I want you to actually picture this kind of life. And this is, how many chapters have you read? Just about five chapters. And we do not agree with everything. All through the book of Judges, the book of Leviticus, rules and regulations, you do this, you must do this. Again, I ask, what kind of life is this? From Judges, Leviticus, a lot of when they were in the um, wilderness, they were under strict rules and regulations. And don't, don't please don't tell me that these things don't concern us. Because in First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says that we have been bought with the price. Let's not talk about the price yet. But it says we have been bought with the price. And let me ask if a librarian buys a book, where does he keep the book? Hmm? In the library. If a shepherd buys sheep, where does he keep the sheep? With the flock. Thank you very much. So if we have been bought with a price, where are we? With his, with his other possessions, which were the Israelites, the Jews. So we can very assuredly say that we are Jews. We are part of the Israelites. So shouldn't all these things apply to us? I mean, we should even have goods just by just keeping them because we know that we will see mess up. We should keep bulls and cows just in case. But this, that's not the life. That's not the life that God has. Now, please, 
Turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 5. Now we talk about the press. It says we have been bought with the press. Romans chapter 5. my Bible, they gave a heading to the chapter. It says, death in Adam and life in Christ. Let us read. From verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Stop. Hmm? Peace of God. Thank you very much. Did we get that? We have peace in Christ through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace of God. Even just the state of being of these people, the Jews. Always looking over your shoulder, making sure that you don't step in shit. Making sure that you don't mistakenly sin. But what does he say? We have peace of mind. So I can sleep. I can close my eyes knowing that there is peace of mind in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue with it. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Jesus. And the glory of God. We did not read one chapter of Jesus. Let me just briefly, instead of going back to read it, say what it was talking about. It was talking about what the priest had to do before it could enter, he could enter I think it's chapter 17 or so. Yes, that's what you just read. Chapter 16. Yes. I was talking about what the priest had to do before he could enter the tabernacle. You saw the many, many things. But what does he say in verse 2? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Access. We no longer need to do all those things that it stated in Judges chapter 16. 34 verses, I presume. Let's continue with it. So the first one was what? Peace. Second one is what? Access. Access. Wonderful. We continue. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work at patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. It's there, very, very clear. Verse 3. Somebody, please. Verse 3, what do we have because of Jesus in verse 3? Glory, patience, and experience. No, experience is verse 4. Let's not talk about it. Okay? Glory in tribulations. And what? Because of those tribulations, we get perseverance, patience. Let's not, so, peace, access, glory, patience. Then in verse 4, because of the patience, what do we have? Experience. Experience. Verse 5. Love. Which verse is that? It's the book. Hmm? Oh. Hope. Hope is hope. Okay, sorry. And uh, hope, thank you very much. Verse 5. And this hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. I don't understand. This, how many things were given to us in the book of Judges? How many things? Did we not sacrifice 50 goats and 10 cows here just just to be forgiven of sins. That's to bring us back to the position of where before. They did not give us anything new. But here, what does he say? Verse 5. And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. So not only are we giving the love of God, but we are also giving the Holy Ghost. That's how many things now, about eight things. Just like that. How many goats do we share in this chapter? How many rams? How many turtle doves? What was, what linen did we put on that qualified us for all these things? We continue reading. Verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Take note to For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet, by adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Okay. Verse 9. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, 
we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay? That's one thing. Which is justification by his blood. Whose blood? The blood of Jesus. Please, what did you say in verse 8? Verse 8, you said you said something. I didn't read verse 8. Sorry. But God commanded his love towards us in that. Commended. Sorry. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We started to paint the picture that all those people in Judges chapter, in just the book of Leviticus, I say Judges, that they were yet sinners. But Christ has died for us. And then in verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Verse 11. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Can we remember where we saw atonement again? I think you're the one that helped us with it. What did you say about atonement? He told us of all the many slaughters, killings, incantations, if you, if you will, that you need to do just for atonement. But in verse 11, it says, and not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So we have received the atonement through Jesus Christ. Not by the works of slaughtering rams or goats or cows or bull, but by Jesus Christ. Please let us continue. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 13. For unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Can you see what he's talking about when we just read in the book of Leviticus? That all these things caused sin. They did not stop people from sinning, but they were the reason they were sin. I hope I'm getting it. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man, sorry, for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Let's just stop there. Did you read what they just, what, what was said just now? Say that if by one man this man sinned, and some people that did see no concern, they were born 5,000 years later. This one man now is Adam. They were born 5,000 years later. And by the similitude of this sin, they have now been attributed to that sin. Just because of one man's sin. And even so, by one man, that all these people, in what, what we just read, verse, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead. That is Adam. If through the offense of Adam, many be dead. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded to many. Verse 16. And not as it was by one man that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one man, was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the, shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So by that same one man, not the same one man, but this another one man that has now removed us from that place of sin and has brought us into the place of righteousness through this one man, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us continue. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. You can hear that it has been mentioning these free gifts often. This is about the fourth or the fifth time it is mentioned in this chapter. 
It has to emphasize because it truly is a free gift. If you look at what you have read in the book of Leviticus, and also in many chapters in the book of Judges, these gifts were not, how would I even call it a gift? It's not a gift, they worked for it. This man slaughtered many, many creatures, as we saw in the book of Leviticus, just to be made whole, just to feel like they are not in sin, just to feel clean. But what does he say? That it is given to us as a free gift. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, hey Jesus. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So what are we? Don't think you I said, so what are we? By one man's obedience. Somebody shout out the real. Verse 20, moreover the law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I think I prefer this one. Who else? Because I don't think I have cows or goats. Or if you know people that just give, give out cows and goats for food, or bulls. Maybe you can go and do that one. May I pray this one? As we say in today's language, very soft life. No stress. How much I love Jesus. But we're not done. Let us also look at Matthew chapter 9. So I've explained it that through Jesus, we are made whole. We have given so many things free. That by one man's sin, all of us are in disobedience. But by one man's obedience, we have now come into that obedience because of Jesus Christ. So as it said in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, where it says that we have been bought with a price. We had yes, we were bought with a price. But as the buyer bought us and took us to his home, that price that he used to bought us, hey Jesus. That price that he used to buy us is now what we will be judged by. It's now what we are going to be living in. So all these, um, let's say, Jews, let's just try and say that they were bought with the price of killing cows and killing goods. But we were bought with the, with the price of the blood of Jesus. So we don't need to do all those things. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to Matthew chapter 9. Somebody please read for me verse 1 and 2. Matthew 11 verse 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, who lay lying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Oh, I don't understand. This thing really doesn't make sense. Thank you. Is it really so easy? If I need you to picture somebody that has lived this life that they were living in the wilderness. If I was walking on the road and I step on a dead lizard, mistaking you, maybe me and my friends were playing ball and I step on the dead lizard, automatically I am unclean. You understand that kind of life? Where you have to be prim and perfect or else you will spend money. Let's just put it like that. And now it is, what does he say in Matthew chapter 9, verse 2? And behold, they brought him to they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. This man sick of the palsy, did he need to kill any doctor to do or um, many, many things we saw in the book of the Did he need to do any of those things? Thank you. How does he want to do it? Jesus just forgave his sin. He literally did nothing. Not, I don't even think he stood up from his bed. But he was healed. His sins were forgiven. Again, I ask you, which one would you prefer? To go and kill many, many goats and cows or to follow Jesus and to be forgiven your sin? 
I don't think you can understand. We need to drive on this point more. Acts chapter 10, please. I'm sure those that know already know where I'm going in Acts chapter 10. Verse 13. I read this chapter many times where yes. Peter was hungry and he fell asleep. Let's just let's not talk about what happened at the beginning of the chapter. Let's just start from there. Peter was hungry and he fell asleep. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Can we see where the thinking is coming from? Leviticus. You can you remember all those things that are uncommon or unclean? And he said he has never eaten any of those things. What a righteous man. Because he followed the law, so he's righteous. Very, very simple. But God wants to bring him into a new dispensation. So look at what God tells him. Verse 14. Sorry, verse 15. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. So all those creatures, uh, if I can remember a few, the pig, the eagle, the vulture, the fishes that do not have scale, all those octopus and the likes. All those things are more kill and chop. Some of them are actually very nice. Not that I've tasted it, but I've heard of stories. All those Chinese people. All those ants, they say we should not eat. All those cockroaches. We can eat it now. Because why? What God has made, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. So <coughs> Sorry, no vex. Cockroach is not part. It's not, no, cockroach is not part. Um, no, she said cockroach is not part. So cockroach is not part. <laughs> all of them are clean. That's what I was calling it. If you don't want to, you don't want this But all of them are clean. All of men are good for food, as the our sister said. They are good to eat. But there are still so many occasions in the Bible. Like, it is to compare the two. It is, you make you smile. And you just say, ah, thank God I was not born in 500 BC or 1000 BC. Because I cannot imagine that kind of life. Anywhere you go, one small mistake, you have entered it. But even today, one small mistake, Father, I'm sorry, you move. Is it not really so, like, it makes me happy. Because I really don't like stress. No. But that's just, I'm just dealing with them one by one. Luke chapter 5. Let's talk about the leprosy, this white skin, and all those things that we read. Luke chapter 5. Verse 12. Does anybody want to be first? Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. After the book of Mark, we're reading from verse 12 to verse 16. Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, please make me clean. Was there anything like that in the book of the discussion? Was it like even Father Moon that you asked somebody to make you clean? Go, no, please, step. Take a, take a walk. Thank you very much. That's the book of the discussion that we just saw. That they will watch him for seven days if. But if he has, let's not, let's not go too far. Let's continue. Verse 13. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Yeah? Sorry, verse 12. Let's, read, let's start from verse 12 again. And it happened when he said, when he saw. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one. And it continues. How many verses did that take? Two, three verses. He said, Lord, I'm, I'm a leprous guy. I can't deny that. If you are willing, will you make me clean? He just said, I'm willing. He touched him and he was clean. I ask again, which one do you prefer? To go and sacrifice to those and sheep and cattle. Again, I'm paraphrasing. Or to ask Jesus, if you are willing, please make me clean. And you don't even need to ask him. What does he say? He said, I am willing. So you know that he's willing. All that remains now is for you to ask, to come to me. Father, I want to use the words that he said. Lord, if you are willing, if you are willing, can you make me clean? He said, I am willing. That's another one. I really like this Jesus guy. Very, very, no problem guy. Just, most of the time, it's even from your side, sir. Because he is willing. He's waiting for you. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 10. Let's just start from verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. Oh, you don't even need to read again. Like, it's so clear. Let me read it again. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, like it is just whispering about it. It has not given us what what is to come. That's the good things. And not the very image of the things. Can never, it can never, with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, Make those who approach perfect. Let's continue. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. Are we getting it? With these sacrifices, you can never be clean. You can never be clean. Because you are going to still have to sacrifice again. You will still mess up. You can't just be clean. You cannot. It just can't. Verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. It just isn't possible. Verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering he did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for sin, you, for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book, it is written on me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of our offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Once and for all. Ah, how wonderful it is. I will no longer have to do all these sacrifices. Somebody's getting it. You no longer have to perpetually live in sin. Perpetually live in fear. Perpetually live in what's the opposite of peace? Hmm? Fear. Fear, thank you. Opposite of peace is fear. 
source of stuff is work, chaos. I love that. We no longer have to live in chaos. Have you ever seen somebody that his mind is on easy? It has happened to me a few times. Yeah. You cannot just, you can't function. Something shall go wrong. But what does he say? That these things have been taken away once and for all. They have been sanctified once and for all. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Ah. Do we get it? Which one do you choose, sir? We don't know yet. Which one do you choose, man? You choose the people, so you choose Jesus. You choose Jesus. Thank you very much. What do you choose? Jesus. Jesus. So what do you choose? Jesus. Anybody that choose the people? I know a very good ram seller. You can patronize him. <laughs> Any questions? Contributions. If you want to thank God that you are no longer living in this sin, that's you know now, so you have been liberated. I can say that. Questions, contributions.